Pedro from AMP Reacts. I'm here today with David Sanchez from Havoc. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How's things out there? Things are good, man. I, I was telling you before we started recording, I tried to dress to impress you because this is our first time chatting, our first time that you're on the channel. So I want to start off with a good impression. I wanted to get you in a good mood. So I figured that this was perhaps the best way to go. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. It's a great uniform that, uh, you know, I'm not for conformity, but uh, I think everyone needs to be wearing a Havoc hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I agree. I, I don't wear it to work because obviously I would most likely would get fired for it com considering the, the design on the back. But every time that I go out, this is one of my favorite hoodies to wear. Yeah, I like wearing uh, the Havoc hoodies too, honestly. Uh, some people will get it, but they're really comfortable, and, and the designs are cool. So The designs are cool. They're comfortable. They keep you warm. They're, they're, they're flashy. They're cool. They're hip. I think everybody should have one in their closet. Yeah, that's right. Or, or two. Or two. Or two. I, I Actually, I bought this one when you guys were in Toronto last time playing at the Rock Pile. What a show that was. That was an insanity of a night. And uh, I made sure I would walk away with a T-shirt and a hoodie. I love it. Thanks a lot for supporting us. My pleasure. My pleasure. We love uh, playing, by the way. Oh, uh, you know, I think that was the. I've been to that venue many times. I think you guys are the band that brought the most amount of people to that venue ever in the history of that venue. Sweet. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think we played there twice, and I think both of those shows were sold out. So yeah, yeah Toronto is definitely a, a favorite for us yeah the city loves you guys We're uh, all in. yeah i, I, I want to ask you let's get into the record uh brand new album coming out may 1st uh how did you guys took this album the creative process behind this album it's through your fifth album obviously the name of the album speaks for itself uh did you guys take a different approach going in into this record or you guys have uh a true pattern on, on how you put together your albums, and this one is just another record. Well, a lot of this one was done remotely. So thankfully, we have the internet, and we were able to do a lot of idea swapping um, without being in the same room together. We did meet up and you know get everyone together to actually write and play stuff in the same room. But... Um, a lot of it was done using the internet. Um, luckily, there's the ability nowadays to basically share a, a recording session in a cloud and just be able to record some stuff, upload it to the cloud, and then everyone else who has access to that session can just download it and add their ideas to it and then hit upload again. And it's really easy to like just ping pong ideas back and forth um, in the digital age, it's very, very cool technology, and it, it helped us a lot for coming up with the ideas for this album. Do, do you feel like this record is perhaps a culmination of all the work that you guys have been building up through the previous four records and now leading up to this new album? Yeah, for sure. I, I think um, every time we put out a new record, we obviously have a, a broader perspective of what's possible to do with our music. and. Uh, you know, expand on like the message and and uh, just what we can do musically with our instrumentation. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that this record is a combination of like all of the things we've learned from doing records in the past and uh, bringing all that knowledge to to a, a spearhead in making um, the best the best record we we could. I, all of us think that this is our our best album that we've ever made, and uh, I think if all of us are on that same page, that that says a lot. <laughs> I, I honestly I agree. Uh, listening to the album, there there's two things I would say about the record. One, it is the best album in my opinion that you guys ever put together, and, and the second thing is, and I'm going to say this very carefully because I want you to take this the right way because this is a compliment. To me, when I listened to this album, I felt that if Metallica was to release Injustice for All today, this album from Havoc would be the Injustice for All from Metallica. <laughs> I'm not offended With by bass. that. With bass. Yeah, of course. We, we got way more bass than that record. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. A lot more. Yeah, infinitely more bass. 
But uh, yeah, I take that as a compliment for sure. And that's one of my favorite Metallica records. And I think it is Reese's favorite Metallica record. So th there's no, um, no, no offense taken on, on that statement. That's a really cool thing to hear. And obviously we love Metallica and uh, they're a huge influence on us. And that's actually the band that inspired me to pick up a guitar in the first place. So wow. getting compared to them, I think is uh, very cool. They're the most successful metal band of all time. And I think that's for a reason. It's, yeah, not, like, beca it's not because they got lucky. No, no. And, and basically what I'm trying to say is that if there was no Metallica and if there was no Injustice for All, this would be the Injustice for All, at least for this generation, for sure. I'll take it. It sounds good. I think <laughs> uh, that record probably has my favorite lyrics of any Metallica record. Yeah, and, and, I, and I felt there, there are some similarities in the way you guys structure this album and then how they structured that album. Not from a lyrical perspective, but more from like a structural perspective and how the album starts off with the opening track and then how it progresses. I felt that, that this new record from Havoc, it just continues to grow. You know, sometimes you listen to an album and it peaks at the beginning. It's very strong, very intensive, very aggressive. Then it dips in the middle with a couple more softer tracks, sometimes a ballad or, or something along those lines. And then it starts to peak back up again towards the end. This album, it felt like you guys were just reaching to the sky. Like it just kept growing and growing, picking up more intensity, getting faster, getting heavier. Wow. Uh, is, was that the idea behind the track listing, behind the structure of the record to just be relentless from the opening all the way through to the end? Well, yeah, a, a lot of... Um... A lot of attention was put into the track listing and the order of the songs. It, it was very intentional. Uh, we always try to make the albums uh, kind of like a roller coaster, not just like all fast and then it's all slow. We try to make it have mm -hmm. peaks and valleys and kind of do this so you, the listener doesn't get uh, bored and um, keeps it, you know, an interesting, fun listen. But with this album, there was extra attention put into that detail because a lot of the intros are, are very crucial to the overall feel that you get from listening to the song. And I, I feel like the intros needed to be placed in the right spots because certain songs would end a certain way and then you didn't want it to go right into another song that's like the same intensity, the same tempo. We really wanted to make sure that it was like this song just ended and now clearly a completely different song just started with a totally different vibe and just kind of like uh we wanted to make it so that the track listing was like when a song would end you get like a little reset button you know yeah. like i feel it, this is not a, a the fast part of the record this is that song is over now we're moving on to the next chapter of of the you know audio book mm -hmm. the, the album had that feel almost of being like your hand right like you have each song is a finger so each song has its own fingerprint has its own dna but when you put them all together in the record the record still feels like a whole it's still very cohesive all the way through using the same elements but then mixing them in a different way to deliver a different song every single time that's a really uh, interesting way to put it but yeah I, I can't disagree with that for sure um it, it was intent, very intentional to, to lay out the record the way that we did. And um, I, I think it's, it's cool. It's a fun listen all the way through. And I think the songs are diverse enough to where when the record is over, you're not like, oh, man, at least for, for me, um, it's not like, oh, man, I'm glad that's over. Like, that was long. It, for me, when the record is over. Um, hopefully people want to hit repeat and listen to the whole thing again because i think it is diverse enough and uh creates enough like uh tension and like tension and release like dr drag and push uh to to make it a very not boring experience to listen to the whole thing start to finish and i can't say that about a lot of records a lot of records uh you're right you, you do listen to the first four songs and then you're kind of over it and, and maybe the rest of it's not that good, but I, I don't feel like there's any shortage of of good material, strong material on this record. And, oh, uh, 
Yeah, I, I just really feel like it's the best total package album that we've ever made. I agree 100%. And, 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 and since we're talking about the track listing, I have to ask you this, because I, I was kind of divided on this uh, at least the first time that I listened to the album. And then the more I listened to the album, the, the more sure I was that you guys made the right choice. And that's the song Don't Do It, putting that as the last song on the album. Did you at any point in time consider putting that in the middle of the record just because of the way it starts? It has a more melodic approach. It's not as aggressive. It's not as intensive. Did you guys thought about putting that in the middle just to kind of give the listener a chance to go up for air, catch their breath before you hit them with a barrage on the second half of the record? I did think about that, but uh, the reason that uh, I felt really strongly that it should go at the end is the the lyrical content of that song. Um, this song is about ending your own life and... Uh, you know, hopefully people don't do that. But um, I, I thought it was the heaviest message, and it's the longest song and has a pretty long intro. And I figured that it would be best suited at the end of the record so that you're not in the middle and all of a sudden you get through this really epic, long song, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's back to short stuff. Um to me, that would have just felt a little strange. And like I said, the, the subject matter of the song is the biggest factor for me in making it the last song that you hear. It has a little bit of a feel of a curtain call, like the curtain coming down at the end and you guys getting a chance to kind of giving your bow to the audience. Yeah, I, I can see why you would say in that. The way, in the way it's structured. Yeah, it's definitely got like a big breather um, before the song actually kicks in. Kicks in. And uh, yeah, it, it almost is kind of feels like an encore to the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has a little bit of that feel. It definitely has a little bit of that feel. I love the track, though. I think the track is magnificent. It's very emotional. It's an emotional driven track where it's both emotionally from the music side of things, but also from your vocal performance on that song. Yeah, it's, it's it's talking about a super heavy subject, oh. and uh, I, I, I've I've been in dark places before, and I'm really glad that I didn't do anything drastic like that because because life definitely got way better, and uh, I'm I'm trying to convey that message to other people that may be struggling with mental health or depression, and uh, you know when writing the lyrics and when performing um, the the lyrics. I just put myself in, in the mindset of someone who is struggling with this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think, I, I think that, uh, those, those emotions and those thoughts and feelings c come through in, in the, the performance of those lyrics. It, it's a really, like you said, it's a, it's an emotional song. And, um, I, I just hope that it, it touches someone and inspires somebody to like the song says don't do it don't do it even if it works on just one person i think the song was uh did its job changing topics a little bit things are getting a little bit darker here in our conversation uh, we talked a little bit about the bass yeah <laughs> we talked a little bit about the bass on the album you guys have a new bass player on this record brendan bruce uh, how was that addition to the team uh, and how did that work on the making of the record? Well, Brandon is a really creative person, and he's a musician that plays a bunch of different stuff. He's a guitar player, bass player, drummer, singer, and keyboard player. So he's got a, a really strong musical um, background. And, he, and like I said, he's super creative, so it was nice to have him around he was already a fan of the band so it's kind of good to have like an outside perspective of, of what we're coming up with uh, a fan's perspective you would say and um he had a lot to do with uh arrangements of vocals and arrangements of songs and obviously it had a lot to do with a lot of the bass work that's on the record and um yeah we're, we're happy to have him and he did a really good job in studio too i know he practiced his ass off 
Uh, he actually doesn't have an ass anymore because he practiced it off to get ready for the record. And when it was time to hit record, he nailed his stuff pretty quick. And uh, I was real happy with with how he did in the studio. It, it was awesome. And um, the bass work on this record, I think, is really cool. I think it adds a lot to the musicality and the melodies in the songs. I, I think it really is adding a whole lot to the compositions as a whole. Um, whereas, you know, in a lot of metal bands, the bass really doesn't do all that much. Um, obviously, I'm not talking about everyone, but like in, in Thrash, a lot of bass lines just follow the guitar riff. And in our band, we every record we seem to do less and less of that. And on this one, it's the most apparent. The bass is playing bass lines. Um, not just following the guitar. It's pretty rare on this record where the bass is just playing the guitar part. I agree with you 100%. I really felt that the bass work on this album was, first of all, was outstanding. And second, perhaps the most noticeable of, of all the previous records you guys have released. The, the grooviness of the bass and how much you guys allow it to come into the forefront is just outstanding. It just gives a different vibe. It gives a different mood to the song. It, it just... It just creates a whole new song basically it just gives more life to the tracks yeah that's a, a big thing when we were writing bass stuff um some of the bass lines w w got written and uh you know we were so used to hearing the song with just drums and guitar and when once the bass was written and got thrown on there like like you said it completely changed the song like took it totally from where you know what what it felt like and the bass changing and not playing the guitar riff completely changed the whole emotion and the whole vibe and just the whole feeling of uh of the music it, it's amazing what what you can do with just you know even just guitar and just a bass you, you can really really dramatically change the direction of uh, of the feeling that you're conveying just by you know messing around with two different melodic instruments yeah, I, I think we focused a lot on making our stringed instruments kind of be more broad and not having all three of them playing the same music we wanted them to all like play different things and intertwine with each other and weave together to make like a more musically dense fabric and i think that's a big reason that this this album is uh more interesting than past ones and i think it adds to the replay value of the songs because on one passing of the song if there's drums three different guitar lines and vocals happening you, you, you've got a lot to dissect and and digest i, I think it uh helps with the replay value because you can't catch everything in the first listen I was going to say that it's a it's a record that it almost every time you listen to it, you're rediscovering something new. So it's almost like you're listening to the album for the first time every single time you're listening to the album. That's good. That's what we want. <laughs> well, that's that's as far as I'm concerned, that's what you achieved with this record. I, I, I feel that way about it. Hell yeah. Thanks for the, the kind words. I think it's that is uh, there as well. And moving from the bass into the guitars, I, I felt that the guitars on this album had such a rich sound. I mean, what you guys did, including acoustic elements, how powerful they were, how driven they were, but at the same time, heavy, melodic, the changes, like you said, the intertwining of, uh, of the guitars. Was that like uh, an effort that you guys had going into the studio? This is how we want the guitars to sound on this record, to be a little bit more than just two guitars we want them to kind of weave of sound and have these all these different elements so that the the sound can be bigger and can be richer well tonally uh we didn't go in with like a uh an idea of exactly what guitar sound we wanted we went into studio with pretty like broad and open mind and perspective and uh we did a lot of experimenting in the studio to get the sounds that we did. Um, we tried out, I think, five different guitars. Um, I think we tried out 13 different amplifiers, uh, wow. nine or 10 different speakers, three different microphones. We tried a lot of different things to, to come up with the sound that you hear on the record. 
uh, all kinds of different overdrive pedals. Like we went way crazy with e experimenting with sounds and tones. And it was the same thing with bass. I think we tried out 11 different basses, um, tried out different cymbals, different drum heads, different microphones. We, we went nuts with uh, making this album sound the way that it does. So I'm glad that the guitars came out good because <laughs> multiple days went into finding those, those tones. And, and one of the aspects of the guitars is the solos. This album is a clinic as far as solos are concerned. I mean, there, you, I can close my eyes and, and point my finger at any track and there's like a glorious solo on that track. It's, it's an absolute clinic from top to bottom. Uh, who, who's the one that needs to get all the credit for, for the solos on this record? Definitely Reese Scruggs. Yeah, he, he's on fire on this album. And uh, I, I start laughing when I listen back to some of the solos because it's just so ridiculous <laughs> what, he's, what he's pulling off on the fretboard. Um, super cool. And I think Reese's uh, solo work gets better and better every time we do a new album. Yeah, th this album, like, it's just outstanding. On, on a solo perspective, I mean, it's just... You, you almost want to hear just sometimes just the solos even a little bit longer because they're just so elaborate. They're so melodic and, and heavy still at the same time and bring so much light and so much energy into the tracks. Yeah, and, and recent solos on this album, I think, are kind of like the bass lines that we were talking about earlier. Um, some of his solos really changed the whole vibe of the song. Yeah. Um, they're, they're like key musical parts of the, the track. It's not just like here's a little shreddy part because it needs a solo. Like his solos are adding a lot to the song as a whole piece of music. It's not just a little tiny sh moment for showing off what is capable on guitar, but it it's, it's incredibly musical and important to the structure. I, I actually said that on my review, I said that the solos are not there just for the sake of having another solo on the track. The solos are actually there to give something extra to the track. Yeah, so we're, and, we're on the uh, same wavelength. Yeah, I, I'm glad. Um, I really do feel that it, it is that way, though. Um, his, his solos are amazing from a technical perspective, but also just from like a the song, the writing aspect, the songwriting. I, I think the solos are are incredibly important to the overall sound of the record. And, and the cherry on top is your vocals. I, I felt that you were irreverent you brought a little bit of, of of grit of dirt if you will to the overall sound that the album has uh what was the game plan for you coming in uh, as far as vocals are concerned for this record well the last record conformicide was super angry and uh i was pretty much screaming my head off the entire album and on this record i didn't want to do that i wanted to chill out a little bit and uh you know i, I didn't want to be screaming the same notes the whole time so on this record the the vocals are definitely more diversified than the last one and uh there's some melodic parts there's some vocal harmony parts and um as far as like the the delivery of the vocals i really tried to put put my head into what I was saying, not just reading lyrics off of the paper and shouting them or singing them, but like really like emotionally connect with what I was saying. And uh, I try to do that with every record, but I think it, it it's more apparent on this record than on uh, past ones. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. And with the album coming out May 1st, I have one more question to ask you which is how you guys are planning on promoting the album, considering, you know, we're all quarantined and uh, touring, God knows when that's going to restart, and summer festivals seem to be all canceled. So what, what do you guys have in mind in order to get the album uh, the right promotion that it deserves so that uh, people pick it up? Well, obviously touring is off of the table, but we're going to be putting out music videos um we've already got a couple out there but i'm currently working on another one to put out very shortly and we want to do maybe a couple more after the album is done because we can't tour right now so we got to put something out for people to 
uh, gain interest in the record and just, you know, have something to, to look at because we're probably not going to be at a venue near it, people for who knows how long. It might be not till next year that we get to tour. And that goes for all bands. It's not just us. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, we want to release more videos. We want to release some playthroughs where we're showing people how to play the songs. And, uh, you know, when, when things get slower, I, I imagine we'll do a lot of writing and um, maybe get some things ready to go for a, a, a new recording to put out maybe sometime in 2021 or 2022. Did you guys consider doing maybe a live stream of a show or something along those? A lot of bands are doing that now. That's why I'm asking if you thought about doing something along those lines, either live stream or, or pre-record a show in front of no audience and then have that available for fans or something along the, uh, something in that, in that vein. Yeah, it's a great idea, but we are so spread out from each other that it's not really feasible for us to do something like that. Um, and because it is, I mean, it would be possible to like record things one at a time and stack them on top of each other, but that's a lot of work. And if we're going to spend that much time uh, working on music in, in that kind of a way, I'd rather spend that time writing new music mm -hmm. than showing people awkwardly put together renditions of songs that were already recorded uh, for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time today to sit down with me and 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 go through the this amazing record. Like like you said it and I said it to me, this is the best Havoc album to date. Uh, it's just an incredible album from top to bottom. So thanks for taking the time and uh, and chatting with me about the album. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. I'm really glad you dug it and uh, I appreciate the kind words. No problem, man. My pleasure. And next time you guys are on the road and you come to Toronto, I'll be there once again buying some more hoodies and, and some more t-shirts supporting the boys. Hell yeah. Sounds great. Thanks a lot for that. Appreciate no it. No problem. Take care, man.